Good evening. Yes, it's Monday Night Live on a Tuesday evening. So I figured, you know what? It was a holiday. Everybody was out fluttering about the world, doing their wonderful Labor Day business. And um, wasn't the right time last night to to be doing a Facebook Live. People were coming back from their vacation. Um, I was watching a most glorious, glorious sunset, I have to tell you. Hi, Lupi. I think you're, you're on. I was watching a most glorious sunset. Um, so let me just get straight in my chair here <laughs> as I'm saying hi to all of you who are coming in. So I don't know that you're here unless you um, actually let me know. Hi, hi Lupi. <laughs> in the comment section that you are here, that you can hear me, that you can see me. Hi, hi, hi. Um, I'm uh, really excited to talk to you because there's um, there's a lot going on this weekend and thank you for the hearts. So um, let's see if we can get a few more of you on board so we can actually start this conversation which is all about acknowledgement. So I'm delighted to be here with all of you and this this is my acknowledgement to you. There's a bud and there's the blossom. So we go from bud to blossom. And I think that the way we do that is we cherish ourselves, we cherish the world, we cherish our learning, we um, expand on our learning, we focus on the inside so that the outside can grow. And when the inside has some insight, that's when this happens. So the blossoming, that's when it happens. Hi everyone. I'm delighted that you guys are here. Thank you so much for coming and watching. I know it's Tuesday and actually for me this is um, Thankful Tuesday, you know, Gratitude Tuesday, Thankful, thankful Tuesday, Thankful Thursday. And I want to talk to you about this this subject that's very close to my heart. So acknowledgement is a subject that's very, very dear and close to my heart. And I think that parts of the world are going to hell in a hat's basket because we are not, we're really not acknowledging one another enough. We are acknowledging the stuff that's not working. We're not acknowledging the good things. And so I thought, mm, we should do a Facebook Live on just this topic because I could talk about this topic until, how do the Americans say, until the cows come home? Yeah, all day long I could talk about this. And at night I could do it with the lights on because I think acknowledgement for things that are beautiful and wonderful and kind and tender and gentle and, and loving it is not it's just not done it's a pr and it's a practice you know just like saying thank you um or how are you or but that's not what i'm talking about i'm not talking this is not a conversation um that's about thank you saying yes please thank you and all that no it's a much um more delicate and much more infused with tenderness and presence conversation and the things that I want to share with you have you know I have little examples and and so many of them happened this weekend um, and so I wanted to share those with you so for those of you who are here if you're here when you come on the only way that I'm gonna know that you're here and I'd love for you to be taking part in this conversation we have many people that come on regularly um, if you are one of those you know what to do and if you're new then make sure that you punch your name into um, the chat box the, into the comment box say something tell me hi Marcel so good to see you Marcel and I went to school together in Germany yay in high school um, Marcel it's so good to see you here sweetheart thank you so much for joining us and for the hearts and for everybody who's sending hearts so this is for you guys thank you guys for being here um, this is what we do. We go from bud to blossom, from bud to blossom. I'm so glad you guys are here. Invite your friends to come and join. This is a very powerful conversation we're going to be having today. And it's powerful because um, it's been a long time coming. And it's powerful because I think that 
we can all use a boost in a an acknowledgement of the things that are, are wonderful you know it's very easy for us to acknowledge the things that aren't going right especially when you're traveling and you're going to a hotel or you're in a restaurant and your food isn't right you know we call that these days it's called feedback or acknowledgement <laughs> but i'm telling you there's a lot of people that tuck the the criticism into the drawer of acknowledgement that's not what we're here to do so beautiful oh you're so beautiful marcel i love you thank you so much for being here invite your friends guys for those of you who are here um invite your friends to come and join this live conversation because it is a conversation so um let me talk to you a little bit about the standards in, in my life that have to do with the birth of this conversation so i have a whole bunch of different standards and so many of you know my ICU cards and they're cards that that I've had printed thanks to a, a business partner and a life partner that that I used to have we were very close and he finally decided Juliana you have this practice of acknowledging people I think we should put it on a card so to this day I still thank him because now it has become an embodied action and so the the birthplace of this acknowledgement um, was when I was very, very young. I may have been 15 or 16. I think it was before I got married, so it must have been before I was 15. And um, I, I used to like look at people and I would go, wow, that's such a beautiful, that's such a beautiful thing that he just did. He held the door open for the lady with the baby in the stroller. Or I was, I was looking at someone and I was going, you know, what a beautiful person you are. And, and that thought was in my head, right? And then I started to realize that the thought that's in my head doesn't really belong to me. It belongs to the person that I'm thinking it about. And I'm just the vessel, I'm just the conduit to bring, to give birth to this saying that comes from source or God or the universe or inner, your, your inner higher power, whatever you wanna call it. Anyway, I, I was being chosen to see the goodness in that person or to acknowledge the beauty of, of her face or her baby or whatever. And then if I don't go up and say it to that person, I've just done the universe or divine order a very big disservice because it ends with me. It doesn't go to its recipient. So I started to take that further and I started to say, okay, well, I'm going to take action on this. Every time I have a kind thought about somebody, it's incumbent upon me to go tell that person. And that's, and, and I still do that to this day, <laughs> to this day, I still do that. And so this whole conversation of acknowledgement, it has been a very long and abundant and rich and beautiful conversation in my life. And it has, um, it has sparked friendships all over the world. It has um, sparked openings to conversations and invitations with other people, uh, whether I'm in Panama or in Germany or in France or in China. We, we just like, we got invited to a Shabbat dinner in China, you know? And so the reason why I'm saying this is, so there's like grounding for, for this conversation. One, it's that when I was 15, I, had, I used to have these thoughts and then, there's a whole level of acknowledgement and a whole level of, of self-responsibility that has come over the years. And um, one of them is, you've heard me say this, I am the masterpiece who masters peace. So if I'm literally the masterpiece who masters peace, first, if I can master peace inside my own body and with myself and with other people, then I can actually be the beacon of, of a joyful, masterful um, example, might you say, or a, a beacon of light or a, a beacon of hope or so, something that sparks somebody else's interest and they go, wow, I, I want what she's got or I, I want what he's teaching or, you know, so we can all be that for one another. So I realized that this I see you game this I see what's beautiful in you because now there are these these cards and they come in a little pack you know I'm talking about it and I don't have one in front of me but I'm gonna post a picture of it down here later and um, 
or maybe Lupita can post it because she, she might have access to it. I don't know if she's got access to them online, but they're really beautiful. So there's six, five, six different cards. One says, um, uh, your smile brightens my day. I just wanted to tell you your smile brightens my day. The other one says, I just wanted to thank you for your authenticity and your honesty. One, the other one says, um, I thank you for, um, making the world a better place. I thank you. So there's like all these different amazing um, sayings. So you can now go, you can take the physical card and you can go and on the back it says, you know, gratitude is a gift you can always afford to give. It's because it's free. But we don't do that enough. We don't acknowledge total strangers, which is which is exactly what this game is about. This game is about getting total strangers together because then you are the masterpiece who masters peace. And it is through that that the borders of our countries be, be dissolve and we become friends with other people and we can jump across nations and jump across cultures. And hold on one second, let me see who's this, who's here. Um, my cousin is here, Max, how nice, Barry. For, for all of you who are here, do me a favor and um, write something into the chat box so that I know that you're here. Um, okay, so it's all about acknowledgement, how important it is. It's the lifeblood of our humanity for one another. It's free, it's kind, it's generous. It can, it can do so many things for one. We can do so much for one another in one sentence of acknowledgement. The other thing about acknowledgement is, which is what I love, is that Hi, Barry. <laughs> Hi, Max. You're here for me. I love you. I love you, cousin. I had some of you tequila. It was so delicious. <laughs> so the other thing acknowledgement does is if we... Hi, Loopy. Let me see. What are you writing, Loopy, before I start my sentence? We'll post the ICU cards, phrases. Okay, sweetheart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, cousin. I love you more. Thank you, Lupita, for, for being on top of that. Um, I, I want people to see that there are packs and that they, you know, they have a sealing wax, Liana seal on the back and all that. And they come in a vellum envelope and they're beautiful. And anyway, so what I wanted to say was that underneath acknowledgement, what's so, what's so powerful about acknowledgement is that we actually in order to be able to acknowledge someone else, in order to be able to see the goodness in someone else, in order to be able to be a witness, in order to be able to be present, we have to get present with ourselves. We have to be grounded and focused with a, with a gentle focused gaze, meaning our gaze, our tactility, our sensory system, our ears, our eyes, our heart, when everything is open, then we can actually be present to the magic around us. And there's so much magic around us, you know? But we're on our phones or we're doing something else and we don't pay attention to the people in our lives. We're more dedicated to paying attention to this thing, this iPhone, you know, and I experience a lot of the um, paying attention or lack of paying attention because as a single woman, I go sometimes with my friend, my friend, Michelle, you guys know that we go out a lot, but we don't have our phones in our hands. So we make it a practice to connect with people, to speak to people, to ask them about their lives, to see how their day is going. But then literally be stay engaged with them not just like engage and then how are you and then turn around so acknowledgement is a practice that we can make ourselves aware of so if i am the vessel if i decide if i would choose every morning dear god where would you have me go what would you have me do what would you have me say and to whom marianne williamson says that in her prayers if that's my prayer, then I cannot but be in my body and aware and hopefully acknowledge what's happening. The magic and the miracles that happen in our lives. All these 
beautiful, tender, just delicious moments that I can't wait to talk to you. So I want to share these moments with you. So, but that means before I share all these moments with you that some of them happened over this weekend. One of them actually happened this morning and it is so in my body and I'm so excited to tell you because it means that we got to be here. We can't be in the future and we can't be in the past. We got to be here in this moment, just like this flower being present, you know, just like a flower is present and just blossoms so that the butterflies can come. I'm here, I'm here, you know, and then they take their, their magic potion and they sp sprinkle it all over the world and every butterfly and every bee knows <gasps> that's where it is. Every hummingbird knows. So should we become that grounded, we start to see a lot of magic in our lives. We see the tiniest little gaze between two lovers. And you know, most of the world will never ever see it. Hi, <laughs> you guys with the hearts. That's so beautiful. Thank you for all the hearts. For those of you who are coming on new, do me, do us, do all of us a favor and introduce yourselves. Let me know which corner of the world you're lighting up today because you matter and you're important right that's why i want to see you so you're we're on we're on a video chat and it's not like i get to see your faces but when you punch something into the chat box i get to see your picture next to your comment show up so thank you for doing that so let me tell you the first story of of something that was really beautiful that happened um I'll tell you this what happened this morning because it's the latest. Um, I was standing, I had just gotten all my luggage uh, and I'm standing at the entryway of the Ritz-Carlton and, and the, the gentleman who was taking my luggage had the coolest name. Um, his name was Adam Goodhue. What a cool name. <laughs> Adam Goodhue and this beautiful, beautiful Adonis of a specimen of a young man, kind and gentle, and his hair was real blonde and, and then his beard had some white in it and he was just grace, you know, he embodied such grace and such love. And so here's this young man, maybe 40 years old, and he had just gotten my luggage and he, um, and I were standing and waiting for my car to show up. So we're standing at the front of the Ritz Carlton, this young gentleman, all my luggage, me, and we're waiting. And as we're waiting, um, there's a couple that walks past us and they're kind of talking and um, he's very elegant and she's very beautiful and they're maybe both of them are about 65, 70 years old. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the age because I, I really want you to to notice this young man who was the bell captain and then me and so both age differences male female then there's this couple that walks through us or kind of next to us through us and the gentleman kind of puts his hand older gentleman all white hair his he puts his hand on the small of the woman's back like he doesn't push her but he the the hand just was so clear the the fact that he took his hand and he placed it just into the small of her back you know that part that's very intimate not on her butt not on her back but into that curve and it was just so beautiful and so tender see when you're asleep to the world and you're not watching people you will never see this and I, I can tell you that as a woman standing there watching this man just hold his woman with the hand on the small of her back, just send shivers up and down my spine. And I just, I thought that was so beautiful. So he, he holds her and he just walks her to her car. Now, he didn't have to walk her to her car because the valet guy was standing at the door. He had opened the door. But the gentleman who's coming, which looked like she was his lover, he was not deterred by the valet guy opening the door for his wife or his lover. He just kept walking and he walked and he walked and, and he took the door 
out of the valet's guy's hand and said, you know, kind of like made this gesture, you're good, I'm here. And the woman had such a big smile on her face and she gets in the car and he kisses her and we can see all this, okay? So the bell captain and I are standing and we're watching all of this. And I look at him and he's smiling and he looks at me and we're, we're smiling at one another. And then the, the gentleman, the older gentleman comes back, he closes the door and he sends her off. He doesn't get in the car with her. And he comes and he gets him, wants to get into another car. And as he's getting in another car, I say to this bell captain, wasn't that beautiful what, what just happened? Wasn't that just so beautiful? And the bellman says, Adam says to me, yeah, that was, what a, what a sweet thing to do. And so I called out to this guy that I didn't know, <laughs> but just in line with the acknowledgement and the ethics that I have for my own life and the, the standards that I uphold and the commitment that I have to being the vessel, being the conduit to someone else's greatness. And I'm just, I'm just the messenger. I'm not, you know, I have nothing to do but just to be witness. But when I witness, it is incumbent upon me to go tell that person. So I said to him, sir, can I just talk to you for a minute? <laughs> and he says, sure. And so he, he doesn't get in his car. He comes over and he stands there. And, and then I did what I'm about to show with you guys, share with you guys and show you and what, what I think the world needs more of. So I planted my feet firmly on the ground and I looked at him and I said, I, um, I want to acknowledge you for something that you did that was just so touching and so beautiful. And I want to do it um, from a place of gratitude for all the single women in the world who don't experience what you just did. And he goes, what did I do? And so he was completely clueless. And then I told him, I said, you know, you took your woman, you took her to the car, you did not get deterred by the fact that the valet guy had opened the door. You made sure that she got in the car, you kissed her, you closed the door, and then you came back. And he was so clueless. He says, but of course I would do that. And then I said to him, you know, there's a lot of people out there who wouldn't. And I really want to acknowledge you for being a man with so much tenderness and so much love and so much grace. And you've displayed all of that in one moment for me as another woman to be witness to. And then Adam, <laughs> the bell captain chimes in and he goes, yeah, that was just so wonderful. And I'm a man and I got to see an example of chivalry. I mean, the whole conversation was, look, that, that just, that was like, what? That was 30 seconds? And it turned in to, to this acknowledgement that took five, 15 minutes, you know, and we talked. And before he went back into his car, he said, I wanna thank you for noticing that. Thank you for seeing me. That's what he said. He said, thank you for seeing me. He says, no one's ever said that to me. So we don't know what we can give birth to through an acknowledgement of love or of grace or of gratitude or of tenderness or what we can wake up in people like the the possibilities are just endless let's see are you guys writing something here am i am i oh hugo buenas tardes <laughs> it must be really late in mexico <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Gentlemanly care. Yes, Barry, that's exactly right. Ah, uh, Marcel, you're still my top fan. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Just keep punching hearts. You know what? The top fan icon is going to come back because in my book, you're a top fan. I love you, honey. So, um, Barry, you and I are going to have a conversation. Most probably you and I are going to have our, our Facebook Live conversation next week. Um, and I want to let everybody know that you're going to be part of it. Um, Barry is a, is a wonderful human being. He is on a deep transformational path so he can be the conduit for a better connection between men and women. Barry, I, just, I don't know where that just came from, but it just came out. So that's who I see you as. 
Hi, Loopy. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, so for those of you who are here, make sure that thank you for the hearts, Marissa. You know, when you guys punch in those hearts, that is like the best. It's just such a great feeling. You punch in hearts and they come all the way across my screen and I love that. And what I want to know from you is um, when have you had an acknowledgement be so grounded and and bookended? You know, an acknowledgement is not just thank you. That's not an acknowledgement in my book. An acknowledgement is when you when you really share with the person what you saw from a ref from your own reflection and what that did for you. So I acknowledge you for being here all of you because by being here today with me on this Facebook live first of all I feel very seen by you. So that's a beautiful thing. And the second thing that you do is you give all of us, me, all of us, the opportunity to engage in a conversation that's for the greater good. So I acknowledge you for that. Thank you. So that's, that's a way to, to let the other person know that what they're doing has an impact on you. And I want to thank one of my teachers, um, Scott Cody, for doing, we did a lot of this work in the embodiment arena. So the leadership embodiment, he has a beautiful program called the art of leadership mastery and language and embodiment go together. You know, when, when you um, give somebody a flower and you say, I love you, something very powerful happens in that person. Or when you, when you see a woman, oh my God, this is so, so this is for all the gentlemen who are watching. When you say hello to a woman, my nephew does this and and not too many men in america do this anymore and and i think we should bring it back kiss a woman's hand you know many 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 years ago a man used to take a woman's hand and instead of shaking it he would just automatically kiss it which is such a beautiful practice that by the way is a major acknowledgement of a woman mm -hmm. it is Thank you for letting me sip my drink in between. So what I would love to know, no matter where you are, Mexico, China, Australia, Germany, Italy, Spain, France, Australia. See, I say Australia and there's Nikki. And there's my cousin Rosa. Hi Rosa, so good to see you. I'm so glad. Rosa from New York and Nikki from Australia. I love that you guys are joining. Thank you so much for being here. So the question tonight is, where, hi, sweetie. <laughs> Where have you experienced the honor of acknowledgement? How has it shown up in your life? What do you do with it? Have you consciously gotten into your, into your present, gotten into your body and said, I'm going to go up and I'm going to tell that beautiful woman that she's beautiful. I'm going to go up and I'm going to tell that gentleman that what he just did, holding the door open for two old people who were with, walking with canes, that that was a very loving thing to do. You know, how, when was the last time you did that? Let me just see, you guys are, Marcel. Anniversary follower, Marcel, you got a new sticker. How cool is that? You must be old, Marcel. You and I, both. <laughs> we're all, you're almost 60, I'm already 60. But you know what, wouldn't it be lovely if the new generation knew that, that the kissing, kissing a woman's hand is just a, not only is it just super romantic, but it's such an acknowledgement. Because not only do they kiss your hand, but while they're kissing your hand, they're looking up into your eyes. Very cool. <laughs> and it's such a beautiful practice. And it's charming and delicious and delightful and honoring and sensitive and it's so many things. Okay, let's see what you guys are writing. You did that Sunday? Of course, Barry, you would because Barry, you're English and British people do that. I'm sure Hugo does that too. Hugo lives in Mexico and is a Spanish, uh, of, I don't know, are all Mexicans of Spanish descent? I don't think so. Maybe I just put my foot in my mouth. 
But the truth is that outside of the United States, that's a practice that's still done a lot. But I don't want to get into just kissing a woman's hand. What I'd love to do is I would love to have you share when was the last time you really acknowledged someone? And and I mean where it where it actually became longer than a 20 second interaction. You know, where you thought of something and you said, I, I've been meaning to say this to this person and I haven't ever said it and I forget to say it or the time just isn't right. Or um, you wake up in the middle of the night and you go, wow, that person did something so lovely and I never really acknowledged them for that. So tell me about it. I would love to. You had forgotten what a memory. Oh my God. Marcel, <laughs> you're so cute. Let's see. Being gracious, being respectful, being aware of others' needs is a skill. Yes, it absolutely is. Okay, let's see what Nikki says. I dislike when a man opens the door for a young woman that they berate them for the stupid... Yes! You, you don't... Okay, Nikki, I just want to get this right. You don't like it that the woman is berating the man for holding the door open. You know, we're going to get into that conversation next week when we have um, our Facebook Live. It's either next week or the week after. Our Facebook Live with Barry, who's also on this um, conversation right now. This whole... Um, correct, yes. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Listen, I have been witness to women who go, I can get that door myself. Thank you very much. Ooh, they become so ugly for me in that moment. And then you know what I do? I walk up to the gentleman and I say, I'm so grateful that you're holding that door and I will receive your chivalry. And then they have this big smile on their face. You know, men are the most beautiful beings. And, and they become even more gracious and beautiful when they are around women who know how to receive their grace and I believe that in America we just don't have enough of that it's not it's not something that's ingrained in the culture and Barry you're English so you don't count <laughs> you received that feedback yourself yeah that's beautiful that's so beautiful well guys tell me some stories I would love to hear um, I usually tell them it is rude. Hi, Kate. You had an interview today with a gentleman who walked you to the door. Fantastic. Ah. See, you never know. You, we really never know. Um, when the grace that we are choosing to display. Okay, so that could be an acknowledgement. It could be gratitude. We never know when the grace that we choose to display in that moment or to live out, to live it out loud, we don't know whose heart is going to touch. Look, this guy didn't do anything that he, today, this older gentleman, he didn't do that in order to get an accolade. It was in his body. Yet, when it was acknowledged by somebody that he doesn't know, okay? It brought something to the forefront of his consciousness that had to do with being recognized, being honored, and being gotten. And the truth is, this whole conversation, I'm the masterpiece who masters peace, I want to bring peace to the world, I am, am fighting for women to, or not fighting, but being a stand and being a champion for women to blossom, being a stand and a champion for women to empower their lives, empower, not be powerful, but empower their lives in a way. All of this is for one reason. And the reason is that we're seen, that we show our true authentic colors to the world so that those who are like-minded and those who can see us will see us. Because if we hide all that, like if we hide this amazing light, if we do this, no one's going to see it. 
So acknowledgement is just another tool in our toolbox to be present and authentic, authentically present to the world in a way that's loving and that ignites the world with more magic. Like, why would you not want to go out and wave your magic wand? <laughs> and acknowledgement is one of those magic wands. It can, it can go a long way. And it's so simple. It may not be easy, but it's a simple thing to do. So we have learned to, to armor up. We've learned to lock ourselves up inside of our hearts. Because we've been told, and we've also had the experience of being heartbroken. The truth is that a broken heart is a better heart. You know, in Kabbalah, we have a saying that um, only a broken heart knows what love means. So if you take a chance and you go out into the world and you open your heart and you show people what, what you're made of, meaning you're not afraid to go out and say something, you know, say, I love you first. Yeah, say, I love you first. What have you got to lose? But we're so afraid. And so the saying, I love you first, you know, is, is all about, can you go up to somebody that you don't know in the middle of a supermarket or in a restaurant and go say, God, you are so beautiful. And thank you so much for doing this and, and acknowledging people. Just, just being God's messenger here on earth with a magic wand. Because <laughs> it doesn't take, it doesn't take, you don't need permission. You can just go be it. Let me just read what you guys are writing here. So, anyone who does anything is a little... Aww. <laughs> yes, beautiful. I've also had women berate me for holding the door open. You know, just don't... You, for all the gentlemen who are listening to this and watching this, um, next, when somebody berates you, don't give it any more energy. I, I don't want to talk. I mean, I do want to talk about it, but I don't really want to talk about it right now because it's not worth it. Mm. Cherish the people around you. And if you come from a place of cherishing, like if you wake up in the morning, you know, like Marianne says, what would you have me, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? It's like, I'm just going to be an angel of cherishing. <laughs> you know, I was telling um, Lupita today, um, I had this big smile on my face, this big glee smile. I'm happy. I love my life. But I always love my life. But now I really, really love my life even more and the people in it, especially some very, very special people. And so I decided... I sometimes do this. I decide, okay, I've got all these teachings and I'm sharing all these teachings around the world with big groups and people and I speak about it. Where can I figure this into my daily practice today? How can I take something that I'm always teaching and, and be very conscious and real about it? So I did this, what I did this morning is I, I said, okay, I'm gonna use this cherish word. I'm gonna practice cherishing the people that come into my day. Now, there were moments, I swear to God, I was not in the mood of cherishing. There was stuff that happened at the hotel, it happened at the restaurant, people were rude, um, they took things for granted. But I stayed there, I kept myself at the commitment that I had made for myself. And I'm telling you, these people turned around and it was so lovely to be witness to because I didn't come down from my cherished cloud. You know, no matter what they were doing down here, I was just going, well, that's really great. And I just kept smiling. <laughs> and it's not, it's not like a defense mechanism. It's just that you, you can't get bad enough to pull me down there. I will not go there. I just won't. 
And then afterwards there was an acknowledgement, even for the people who were mean. And so it, it showed me that when, when we keep our buoy up, people will rise. It just takes a while and it takes some inertia and it takes some fortifying. We need to fortify ourselves so that we can keep staying up at this level. What, you know, and, and then people will rise. They will rise. They will rise to the occasion, and they will rise to your joy, and they will rise to the honoring of the acknowledgement. And for that, I am so unbelievably grateful that I've learned this lesson, and I keep learning it every single day. So for those of you who are here new, please let me know that you're here. I will not know that you're here unless you print something into the box. Hold on, Marcel, what are you saying? My mother would always say, kill him with kindness. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that, Marcel. So the killing with kindness is, yeah, I get it, but that's not what I'm talking about. I, I know that people say that. But see, in, in the sentence alone, it's already, there's already a, mm, there's already a sting kill him with kindness. No, no, I mean, truly be authentically generous. It's not, you're not trying to kill anybody. You just being who you are. That's really who I, I mean, the people who are around me a lot, Marcel, they will tell you it's the meaner people get on the other side, the more I stay grounded in my, in my joy and in my love. And often it's not easy. So and you know we're going to do a facebook live on on the ontology of language and what words we use in our daily conversations like kill them with kindness or i have time to kill or um uh, i want to lose weight listen if you want to lose weight you lose your keys you want to find them if you want to lose weight you're gonna find it again so there's a lot embedded in in language that i I don't agree with and I think words are really powerful they're the most powerful tool we have that's why acknowledgement is such a it's um it's a gift and a tool and it's a way of being so when when we get that in our bodies you know when we get that grace is the only way to go it's magical and n nobody can tip you over because you're grounded in it it doesn't mean that you won't get upset it doesn't mean that you won't get angry it doesn't mean but it but mainly like the water that you swim in becomes that it's very cool loopy can you let me know what time it is because i have no idea and i have no idea who's on and I'm just delighted that you guys are here. And if I haven't said hello to you, please make sure that you put something into the chat box. Even if you're watching this later. Um, thank you, Loopy. <laughs> thank you, Marcel and Nick and, and Barry. Barry, this is so lovely. I'm so grateful that you're here. So we have about 10 minutes, and I thank you for coming on um, to my Monday Night Live on Tuesday. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Thank you for, thank you for hearing this. I'm, thank you, Barry. You know, it's a, it's a real joy to be having these conversations and to watch you guys interact and engage and and come back like Marcel top fan she would avoid any confrontation by being super kind oh see but that's that's sad for your mom and I get that so that's an avoidance you know I'm not avoiding anything man I am so you you heard me last week when we were doing the 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 um, Facebook live on confrontation and I have no problem with confrontation <laughs> I just don't want to go down into the muck and the mire of mediocrity I don't want to go there I if there's any way that I can keep myself at a high level of gratitude I will do the best that I can 
Mind you, I'm not saying I can do it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm always doing it. But I can tell you that the, the way to serenity is through gratitude and acknowledgement for me. So if that, if that helps anybody, um, that it's my joy to give you that gift. Because go try it out. Like, go test it. You know, when you're having a bad day, when I'm having a bad day, which doesn't happen so much these moments anymore. I have bad moments. And then I get outside of myself and I either go wash dishes or, um, or I do something really wonderful for somebody else. Because when I get outside of my own head, because my own head is not a great neighborhood to go into by myself, then I can actually be in service and in acknowledgement. By the way, I want you to see this. Um, I have this pack on my desk, and, and you can't really see this, but I'm gonna show you. So um, I have a whole thing set up here with my um, sealing wax and my thank you notes. See, and I have all kinds of different thank you notes and my pens and my ink and my ink pens. And um, here's my sealing wax that I melt and here's my seal, okay? So it's all here, right here on my desk. And I look at it every day and I use it and I, it, it's a practice. Writing handwritten thank you notes is a practice. And sometimes when I can't sleep at night, I wake up in the middle of the night and I, I write them. And I don't have the address, so I'll, it has to wait till the next day. But I'll tell you what it does. It's, there's a, um, there's a direct correlation between gratitude and expressing gratitude in moments of dread or fear or anger or, or all those moments that we don't like. So when I'm experiencing something that I really don't have any control over or something difficult is happening or I'm going through a difficult time, I sit down and I write thank you notes. <laughs> and sometimes I don't even send them. Um, here's one that I've written and I haven't sent. It's to Cheryl McLean. Look, I've sent it, I've written it, and I haven't, still haven't sent it. But I can tell you, or and I can tell you, that this, this purple thread of acknowledgement that runs through my life has been a really, really powerful tool. And it's been... It's a powerful tool in the middle of a conversation when things go south. Before they go completely south and they end up in the bowels of the earth in a not good place, I usually try to pull myself out of it by just turning the conversation around and looking at this person and going, what do I love about you? What What is it that I... What's the magic and the gift that you've brought into my life? Because you're here. You, if you're here, whether you're the, the mailman or whether you're my assistant or my mother or my brother or my sister, there's a connection. Even if it's a slight connection, but there's a connection. There is something precious and magical and beautiful and, and congruent that you bring into my life. So if in that moment of difficulty, I can get myself to see that just in one of God's breaths, one breath, I've already changed the chemistry in my brain and I can completely turn it around. Look, I want to share something with you. Um, for those of you who are watching, I've done so many Facebook lives and I've talked about a lot of topics. And the other day, um, I was reading something where they had basically taken my Facebook Live and they had transcribed it and they had put it into one of their letters that they were sending out and they didn't know that I was on the mailing list. <laughs> so it was all my words, everything. It's like almost verbatim. And I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? This person just went right ahead and plagiarized everything that was coming out of my mouth. And I could have been really pissed, you know, but I didn't, I didn't say anything. I figured there's got to be a reason why people do this stuff. There's got to be a reason why um, 
somebody is so hard up on on taking another teacher's teaching or another mentor's teaching and 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 just hide it under the umbrella of their own and I wrote a thank you note to that person I did it's really interesting and, and it was interesting what happened in my body oh. without permission yes Barry without permission <laughs> they didn't quote me they just took um, they basically took a video that I had done and they they turned it into um, a top they turned it into a topic you know they gave it a different title but they yeah people do it a lot it's very interesting so I just use that that moment so that you can kind of get an understanding of you know if you're pissed like these days I don't get pissed at a lot of stuff but that was really interesting because you know I I did exactly what I tell you guys that I do. I sat down and I wrote a letter. I didn't send it. But I went, I, it, it ignites compassion. Like I'm trying to find the words of, of what it is that's happening. You know, it ignites compassion. That's because golden rainbows come out of you. <laughs> Nikki, you're so cute. I love you. Um, you could thank them for saving you money getting it transcribed. <laughs> yeah. But you know what's interesting? Is um, I believe that we all have a purpose and we all have a message. Thank you for all those hearts, Loopy. So I believe we all have a purpose and a message. And that the purpose and the message comes through us and it doesn't come through somebody else. For those of you who've read Big Magic, you know, if you haven't read it, read it. It's a phenomenal book. Um, and in the book, why can't I remember the, the author? Where is my head? Anyway, in the book Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert, she talks about how... Um, and, and this is not going off subject because... This still has to do, we're still like in the parameters of acknowledgement and gratitude, but because she does, she acknowledges something, sorry, let me just move my chair. She acknowledges something in her, in her book, Big Magic, which has to do with the acknowledgement of inspiration, that inspiration comes to us, like ideas come to us. They're like a guest. Money comes to us like a guest. I just put that in there because like lovers, they come to us. If we don't treat them well, if we don't treat money well, if we don't treat an idea with grace and dignity, the idea is going to go and find a different parent. The idea is not going to sit here and wait for you to get your ass in gear so that you can go then present the idea to the world, okay? That's her belief system. It's actually also my belief system so that the we are we are honored to be given the opportunity to birth an idea. And sometimes, and, and she speaks this so beautifully in her book. I love that book. Because she says, you know, if you take the idea that you had, like you start writing a book and you stick it into a drawer because you're going to get back to it later, that idea is going to go, no way, man. I'm going to go find another home. And that's how sometimes these things happen, you know, that two people are speaking the same language or, you know, I, I taught for, I don't know, 10 years. And then suddenly somebody said to me, Liana, have you ever heard Brene Brown? I go, no, who's Brene Brown? And then it was like, we were both saying the same thing at the same time. And I had no idea who she was. So it happens. But the person who and the person who acknowledges it you know so if this person is choosing to take my idea and they want to transcribe it and pass it off of their own look wherever that idea feels more at home is where it's going to blossom like a lover i don't think we can take anyone's lover away or or grab them from somebody else it doesn't work that way I think that there are many, many, many more um, levels 
that are included in that conversation. You t can't just go s to someone and steal an idea or steal their person or steal their life from underneath their feet. It's, it's a deeper conversation, so, which we will have maybe one of these days. <laughs> we are all responsible, you know. If an idea leaves me and somebody takes it, if they're doing a great job, God bless them, you know. If I didn't do such a great job, then maybe I didn't deserve to give birth to it. But this piece was different. So, yeah, taking my words directly, transcribing them and passing them off as their own, it's, that wasn't cool. Because it didn't sound like that person, you know? Yeah. So, okay. If you're here and you're new and we have four more minutes, I think Lupita is going to give me an update. Um, thank you for all the hearts. I think my friend Dale, who also went to school with me, Marcel, do you remember Dale Gombert? He went to school where he was like, I think one or two grades above us. <laughs> and I'm going to have to put my glasses back on. Um, people know that it's fake. Yes, of course they do. Yes. That's why authenticity is the new currency. You know, it's like people know. Mm. okay guys I'm delighted that you guys are here let me acknowledge you one more time thank you for being here thank you for putting your hearts on the page typing them into the chat box thank you for taking time from Australia and Germany and Mexico and all over the world. I'm delighted that you guys are here. And if you have a question and I and and if I have an answer, I would be delighted to answer you. And if not, I will definitely see you on Thursday. We're going to do another Facebook live on Thursday. I don't know what the title is yet, but I will let you know. Send this to someone if you feel there's one tiny jewel in here. A sentence, a word, a gaze, a laugh, a connection. Share it with people that you love. You never know what it's going to do to someone else. It's lunchtime there. Go have lunch, sweetie. I love you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you on Thursday. Thanks all for watching. <laughs> see you later. Bye.